Michelle friends, Beth with Thimblehooks, and it's starting to get colder, so I am going to show you how to make this really cute, really, really cute little headband. It has a little crisscross in it, and it even has, I love this one, this is a great color too, just an off-white, winter white. There's one in a speckly black, this one is pink, surprise, surprise, and this one is, oh, with the really chunky stuff really chunky stuff this one was actually kind of a little bit hard to make because it's so hard to see the stitches but there's two ways that I'm going to show you how to do this actually one way it's just the way you finish off is the only thing that's really different so if you wanted to you could have this be for a ponytail or not so it's really really simple it only take you about a half an hour so this is all a, it'll take about a half an hour to get one of these done. Maybe a little bit longer, but generally I can have them done within 30 minutes. And this is uh, super bulky. So it's a, this is a six weight right here. This is also a six weight. This is also a six weight and it's really fluffy so it even looks a little bit bigger. But it's still nice and stretchy. And this one is a four weight but I use two strands so if you don't have any of the really fat yarn I call it fat yarn you can just use a double strand and still make the same thing in whatever yarn you want so you don't have to be going running out to the store and finding fat yarn so this is fun this will only take a little bit you're gonna need a 10 millimeter hook whatever yarn you're planning to use I'm using a six bulky today I'm using this one right here this is a six bulky weight. It is a Lion brand and I lost the sleeve for this one so I don't remember which color it is but it's very similar to the Homeland USA and all of the other ones. It's still a six bulky. So I'll put my glasses on. You want to have a 10 millimeter hook and you will need a needle at some point and you probably will want a clicker some way to keep track of your rows right here and a scissors. Start out with the slip knot any way you want to make your slip knot. Everybody makes them a little differently. As long as it works for you, that's great. Now we're going to chain 12 and do it a, kind of loosely because you need to be able to work into the back bumps of your chain and it kind of can get hard with the with the 10 millimeters. So we do these nice and loose. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Have a little chain of twelve. Flip it over. You see these little back bumps right here. Down all the way down the chain. We're going to single crochet into each one of those bumps. So starting in this first little bump that you can work in, second chain from the hook, you want to work in that back bump, a single crochet, all the way down, so we'll end up with 11. And see that can be tricky, but it's really worth it, it makes a nice finished edge. This row will take probably the longest out of anything, but it's still not long because it's only 11 stitches. So there's two, and there's three, Six, seven, eight, nine. Here's number ten, and our very last stitch right here by the tail is number 11. So it took a little bit longer to work into those back bumps but it's worth it because look at that nice finished edge we're gonna have. Actually looks like a stitch instead of half a chain so this is great. Alright so that was row one. 
we're going to go click. Click, roll one. And for the next nine rows, we're going to do, surprise, surprise, a Suzette stitch. The next nine rows. So that's why you want a clicker, because it's easy to get distracted. So it's a chain one, turn your work, a single crochet, and a double crochet in the same stitch. In that first stitch, you get both of those. And then we're going to skip this stitch, single and a double in the next stitch. Single and a double. Skip, single and a double. Skip, single and a double. Skip, single and a double. And now we get down to the last two stitches. Right here we're going to skip this one and in the very, very, very last stitch only gets a single crochet not the single and double combo. So just a single crochet. Go see, look at it. It's already working up so fast. And that's number two. Click. My last row of Suzette, so there's a single and a double in the first stitch. Skip, single, double, skip, single, double, skip, single, double, Single, double, skip, and then the very last stitch gets a single crochet only, no double. And then chain one. So you were ready for the next row. All right, so there's the first part of our headband. Now we're going to work on the crisscross part, which is really cute. Just a little bit of a design, not very complicated at all. So we did our chain one, and we're going to turn our work so we're ready for this row. But we're only going to work our Suzette in half, down half. So we're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet. And a skip, a single crochet, and a double crochet and a skip and then this this is our last stitch for this little part right here so then it's just a single crochet so cute and we're going to do that <clears throat> do this this little side right here for 10 rows that was number one so we're going to chain one turn our work, single, double,
and a skip, single and a double, and a skip, and a single crochet only because it's the very last stitch. Chain one and turn our work. We're going to do that a total of ten times. And here's my last row on this part of the crisscross is a single and a double, a skip, single, and a double, and a skip, and the very last stitch is a single crochet. And sometimes I don't, there we go. We're about half done. Isn't that fun? Alright, so there's our half. There's the first half. So all you have to do now is just finish this off. However you finish things off, I just go yarn over like that. Leave it long enough so that you can weave it in a little bit. There you go. Half done. That was pretty fast. I think that was pretty darn fast. And that was row 20. Whoopsie. So there's single, uh, this is a chain, and then we have a single a row of single crochet, nine rows of Suzette, and then this part was ten rows of Suzette. So this is technically one, nine, and ten. That was the end of row 20. So now we're going to start on this side. We will do this side of the flap in just a second. Alright, so here's the first half. First half. We have the base here, one of the crisscross flaps. Now we're going to work on the other crisscross flap. It goes right here. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to work from the middle out this way. The trick here is that this middle, very middle stitch right here, we need to skip it. We need to it connected right here, not here, here. Connect that on and a single and a double. And a skip, a single and a double. And skip and the last stitch on this row is a single crochet. Click. I consider that row 21. Right, so now we need to do this 10 rows just like this one was. That was row number one. So we need to make it look just like this. So we need to do nine more. Nine more Suzette rows exactly like it. So it's a single, or there was a chain one and a turn. It's a single crochet and a double in the, in the very first stitch. A single and a double in after the skip. There's the skip. And in this last one, it is a single crochet only. And that is row 22. chain one, turn your work, and you do this until we have ten rows of Suzette on this little part of the crisscross flap. Almost there. One more row. So close. One more row of Suzette. So the chain one, turn our work, a single and a double in this first chain, or this first stitch. Skip single and a double in the middle stitch there and in the last stitch gets a single crochet only. All right, now we have two rows get this sideways here. That was row 30. Now we have two rows 
that match on this side and this side, and here's the first base that we did. There's the base, there's a flap, and there's a flap. Now we are going to cross these flaps. Cross like this. See again? Taking the one that has our working yarn on it right now. Move him over here. And we're going to start working right here and connect to this one. Right there. And again, that is going to be, of course, with a Suzette stitch. So we need to chain one so we're ready for the next row. These are crossed over. So here's our single crochet and the double crochet. And a skip, a single crochet, and a double crochet, and a skip, single crochet, and a double crochet. And now on the other part, looks like I get my yarn out here again. going to do the same thing again, but we're not going to skip. Just have to start again right here in the very first stitch because our skip is technically way back here when we, when we did not use that middle stitch. So that's the skip. We don't have to skip in between these two. So we are going to single and double in the first stitch of the other flap. skip, single, and a double crochet in the next, and a skip, and our very last stitch gets a single crochet only. Isn't that sneaky? That's row 31. Now I just need to make it look exactly like this on this side. So we need to do nine rows of Suzette. We've already done one, so eight more. Eight more rows of Suzette. So there's a single and a double in the first. And a skip, single, and a double. In the next single and double after the skip and we're going across now so you're going to skip this guy single crochet and a double crochet skip single and a double skip and the last stitch is a single crochet and I call that row 32 chain one turn your work I know this is going to be the very last row of Suzette so there's a chain one and turn our work so we're ready for our last row of Suzette single and a double crochet in that stitch and a skip, single, and a double, and skip, single, and a double, and a skip, single, double, and skip, single, and double, and a skip to the very last stitch, which is a single crochet only. Your 
There we go. We're getting really close. Now just like we started with at the very beginning, we have to do one row of single crochet to make this nice edge. So that's easy. That was row number 39, so this is row number 40. Chain one, turn our work, and a single crochet all the way down. This should be 11. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All we have to do is connect. You can do this any way you like. If you want to sew it, you can sew it with a big yarn needle. I'm just going to do a, a chain one here and I'm just going to go through and do a slip stitch in each one of these. Now you have two options. You can do 11 slip stitches all the way down and close it completely like this one is. Or you can leave a little ponytail part, a little ponytail hole right here. I'm going to finish this one off with the ponytail because single crochets to 11 is pretty easy. That would be all the way down to close the whole thing. We're going to single crochet, or we are going to do slip stitch, I'm sorry, slip stitches. We're going to do one, two, three, skip five, and one, two, three, because there are 11 total. So we'll go in here and through the other side, pull through and slip stitch. That was number one. Through and through and through and slip stitch. That was number two and here's number three. pull through and slip stitch. Now we're going to skip the next five so what I will do down these five to get to this side without leaving a long string we're going to just do a slip stitch down one side. The other side way over there. One, two, three, four, and five. Now you bring the other side back up again and we have to line up the last three stitches. One, two, three, one, two, three. So again we're going to slip stitch like we did the first part. One, two, three in. We're going to go to this stitch right here, pull through and slip stitch. One more time. There's number two and here's the last one. You can see why doing the back bumps in the very first chain in row one makes this so much easier and such a much nicer, much nicer edge. And there we go. Now we just have to finish off any way you wish because this will be on the inside. snip and just tie these in a knot, tuck them in later. You're not going to see that right now anyway. So here's the back side with the ponytail. Here's the front side. We're going to turn it inside out so we don't see any of these slip stitches, just turn it inside out. Only thing left to do is to weave in the ends any way you wish. I'm just going to pull them through right now. And tuck them back there a little bit. 
so we can see the finished piece. Cute little headband. Now that it's getting cold, nice and bulky. Keep your ears warm. And it has a ponytail binder or a ponytail hole in the back if you want it that way. If not, probably won't get too cold with that tiny little hole, but it's enough for a pony. And it has a great little crisscross right there. Just a little bit of an interestingness. Not too difficult. And my favorite Suzette stitch. So there you go. There you have it. Make those up in about a half an hour. Make a whole bunch of them different colors. everybody's happy. All right, so I'm Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your support for my small business. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.